I Shimai said that he cry so he Chris though he was cracking let's and basically anyone else if you're new to the channel basically all I talk about right now is this incredibly niche series of books that gets me like two views per video so you know it's refreshing to talk about something a little bit more new and by new I mean books that were published this year because uh, I'm quite late with this uh, cheeky chat on the uh, Gardas Jogoku that's right ladies and gentlemen today we are talking about F Gardner's Jogoku now this is the same F Gardner that wrote the infamous Call of the Crocodile and then Call of the F Gardner which uh, it is it is what it is so you might be scratching your chin asking yourself is Jogoku any good is this bad boy something that's worth picking up is this going to be a literary masterpiece that we're going to look back on in the history books in maybe 200 years time and what I'm going to say is uh, it's basically a reskin of Pokemon the Pokemon influences are very 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 on the nose it's like a punch from Mike Tyson you're not gonna you're getting halfway through the book and you're like oh yeah this is uh this is basically the storyline one of the Pokemon games and that's that's about it guys, thanks for watching. Jokes aside, what is this book about? Now, if we're gonna pick up the book, we're gonna turn this bad boy around, we're gonna read the blurb pick, huge. It says, Jerry has always enjoyed playing the popular trading card game, Jogoku, a dark and macabre game from Japan, which is about battling gruesome monsters in a fantasy world. Collecting the cards and imagining himself in the wild world the monsters exist has become his favorite pastime. Depressed that the fictitious monsters don't exist in his world, a thought occurs to him. Maybe they don't have to be fiction. Maybe the fantasy can become real. But at what cost? So what is the cost? What is this cost that Jerry has to pay to be in the Jogoku world, the Pokemon world, whatever, the Hoenn region, whatever region it is? Do you want to know what the cost is? Well, he, uh, he gets a defibrillator and he zaps himself in the head. So yeah, this book is all about Sapaku, Sudoku being an hero. And because this book very much follows a similar storyline to Pokemon, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh. Well, you're not gonna laugh. You're gonna roll your eyes. Jerry is basically Ash Ketchum. And uh, Gary, do you, uh, do you want to know who Gary is? Gary is uh, a boy called Liam. Now this boy has had a very unfortunate life, he's currently in a hospital with uh, cancer, he's wheelchair bound, he hasn't had a fun time whatsoever. Now this guy, he sees Jerry taking his own life, he's like, oh yeah, I want to go to the uh, Jogokumon world. So he does exactly the same, but his is a little bit, a bit more, a little bit edgier, a little bit gory. So characters aside, they are very much your generic teenage characters. Now like I said, this book, these books, this book series tends to be uh, a young adult horror fiction. and. You you know, God has sort of gotten into the, he's gotten into the hang of writing these short stories. They're all fairly interesting, but let's talk about the story itself. Like I said, it very much follows Pokemon. It is basically Pokemon. Now, Jerry himself is first to Pokemon. Uh, basically, just characters. Characters. The first one's a creature from uh, Call of the Arcade. The second Pokemon he gets is basically the Crocodile from Call of the Crocodile, which is a fun little Easter egg. Can't complain that. It is quite fun. It's quite charming. It's nice to see. Liam, on the other hand, he basically has Beedrill. He has, uh, well, Beedrill. I think this one was in Call of the Arcade as well from one of the characters, little fan fictions. It's, uh, it is what it is, a Beedrill. Beedrill's one of my favorite Pokemon anyway, so I can't complain there. So talking about Liam, let's talk about Liam. Liam is a massive edgelord, and this is understandable because obviously he has a tragic backstory. He's lived a life of suffering and discomfort. He hasn't had a nice life whatsoever, and this manifests in the character being an absolute absolute let edgelord. He is unbearable. The first time you encounter him, blood is gushing from his mouth. He reveals that he uses blood of weak Pokemon, Jogokumon, to lube up the wheels of his wheelchair. It's all quite weird. And he basically uh, just sort of promotes eugenics to Jerry. It's uh, quite strange reading about a child supporting eugenics. Liam's philosophy is that only the strong can survive and because obviously this kid is quite strong to have survived the harsh life that he has had. I say that, he's, uh, he's no longer alive is he? But, as he survived this life, he believes that all the Jogokumon should be like him. If they're not strong, well they don't need to be around anymore, just game over them, who cares? And Jerry is uh, very much like Ash Ketchum, and he's very much about, well, it's all about building friendships and creating bonds with your poke Jogokumon, and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if the thing's weak, as long as you can train up to be very strong. Think about Magikarp, whap some steroids on it, boom, you got a Gyarados, or you got this buff-ass Magikarp, who can just bench four plates. 
you know, it is what it is. Now I keep actually, I keep going on about Pokemon, I keep going on about Pokemon references. Yeah. Now, is this, uh, is it obnoxious? Can you not notice it? And the answer is no, it's always going to be there. This is very much like, uh, like a disturbing rendition of Pokemon. Now, is there anything that this story provides other than Pokemon? Now the answer is, well, the short answer is no. The short answer is no, but it does try to talk about self-game over. And by this, I mean the word that I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say on YouTube. But it tries touching upon it. It tries touching upon the consequences and how the character, well, Jerry in particular, he seems to regret his decision. He seems to realize that he actually had quite a nice life. He had a loving family and he really wants to go back to that life. And he sort of looks at Liam with contempt and he tries to wish that upon him as well. And this is is really what happens towards the end of the book this is really the whole dilemma at the end of the book does this book offer anything else and uh, yeah it does actually it uh, it sort of implies that this Jigoku world is the afterlife in Gardner's horror Ball series in his universe because what you encounter who you encounter are characters from reptilian odyssey and hunger of the kangaroo now hunger of the kangaroo it sort of explains the ending a bit more from what I can gather the whole world is just blinked out of existence at the end of the book and the two main characters are like well let's just go to heaven because there's nothing else to return to and that's exactly what happens it sort of touches upon death and what happens in the afterlife and then you have uh, reptilian odyssey and reptilian odyssey it's pretty cool it's pretty cool it's pretty cool the guy uh, the character who uh, i think is captain chrono he, he gives jerry his legendary jagokumon and then sort of does his business not to spoil anything but because I have said that this bug is basically Pokemon, you're going to guess that the ending is the Elite Four or something like a gym battle. And that's exactly what it is. Jerry versus Liam for the badge. I say the badge, there is no badge. They're just fighting for like Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat and he's going to grant them a wish. He's going to grant the winner a wish and then the loser can get wrecked, scrub. So do you know what happens? What actually happens is they end up fighting with the legendary Jogokumon. Now Jerry has a death ape and Liam has a Hellbird. Now, the Hellbird is very much like Ho-Oh from the old generation, from the anime where Ash just constantly sees this bad boy flying in the air, and Death Ape is basically Kong from Skull Island. Now, if you ever played the Pokemon games and you went up against your friends and you had a fantastic little battle, this end fight sort of plays out like a, like a friend-to-friend -friend battle that you would have had in real life. You whacked out your legendaries, your over-level starters, and you're just seeing who wins. Except because there's massive plot armor, we both know Jerry wins. So, how does this book hold up to uh, the rest of Gardner's entries in the Horrors Call series? And to answer that question, I'm just going to say the book's okay, it just felt a bit too much like a Pokemon fan fiction, and I know personally that Gardner can, he's, he's a lot more creative than I, he could do so much more, like read his other books, they're pretty, they're pretty creative in themselves, but this one, it just felt like a Pokemon fan fiction. But it was an entertaining read nevertheless. Now, would I recommend this bad boy to you, and the answer is, well... It depends. It depends on what you are interested in yourself. If you are following Gardner's work anyway, you're probably going to collect this book. And maybe if you're on the fence thinking, oh, is this book actually any good? The answer is, well, it's an entertaining read. If you haven't got any of the Gardner's books so far, and you're asking, well, should I jump in with Jigoku? And the answer is, do you like Pokemon? Because this is pretty much an anime story arc from the old series. And I don't even watch the Pokemon anime, but I knew what it was. And that's the thing, it's two on the nose. And if you don't like Pokemon, you're probably not really going to connect with this book, unless you like Gardner's writing in particular. Nevertheless, this is an entertaining read. It's not going to stimulate your mind, but it's fun, it's short and sweet at 118 pages. It's basically a book that you can read in one sitting. Now, I gave this book a solid 4 out of 5 stars, because generally speaking, I enjoyed it, I liked it. But it's going to come down to you personally whether or not you pull the trigger on this. Do you like Pokemon? Do you like Gardner's writing? And that's why I'm going to have to leave it. So if you've watched this far and you're at the end of the video, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to say, whatever you need to say. Get it off your chest. Let's start a write what's on your mind thread. So will I read the newer books and uh, eh. We'll, we'll see when we get there, ladies and gents. We will see when we get there. Um, but 
if uh, if you particularly want me to feel free to comment who knows so i'm gonna have to leave you there guys so thanks for watching take care hope you have a lovely day hope you have a lovely week a lovely month a lovely life ta-ra bye-bye